Survivor Series 2014. I'm going to be honest here, people. There's only one thing to talk about when you're going to talk about this pay-per-view. And it's only going to be that one thing for even more years to come. You're only going to talk about that one fucking moment from this show. Everything else on this pay-per-view, irrelevant, bad, doo-doo nonsense. It was all filler crap to me. I felt this pay-per-view overall was just bad, minus the one motherfucking moment we got from this pay-per-view. So I'm just going to run down the show really quickly. Honestly, just being honest here, I just thought the show was just really bad. I was literally zoning out for most of the show. Just didn't really care for the show. It just felt flat and underwhelming to me. The opening promo. Yeah, we got an opening promo on a Big Four pay-per-view. was just pretty much Vince telling John Cena he has all the power once his team wins. Cool. Fatal 4-Way Tag Team title match. Okay, Tag Team title match. Miz and Miz now win. Right team goes over. And I loved how the Miz, he was just celebrating the belts for himself. I felt that was fucking awesome. Good way to set up the eventual Miz and Miz Dow feud in the future. Fatal 4-Way Elimination Match. Or not Fatal 4-Way. 4-Way, 4-on-4 Diva Elimination Match. Uh, team Paige versus Team Alicia. Avoid this match. This match is trash. Minus Paige and Natalia in the beginning. Some of the stuff Naomi and Paige were doing in the ring. You can just skip this match. This match is doo-doo garbage. A bunch of crappy run-ins, a bunch of shitty roll-ups, and a bunch of sloppy spots. That's all this match was, so you can skip this match. You're not missing much. Dean Ambrose and Bray Wyatt was pretty much filler. This was just pretty much a filler match to set up the TLC pay-per-view match, which they're going to be having, and it's going to be a TLC match. Uh... I did like that the ending was kind of similar to the John Cena ending, the way that John Cena should have ended his match at WrestleMania by hitting Bray Wyatt with the steel chair. I did like that ending, but I felt the match itself didn't tell the story that, you know, the Cena match was telling. I didn't feel like Bray Wyatt was ever inside Dean Ambrose's head. You know, it just kind of showed me that Dean Ambrose is a lunatic, so I guess it fits with this character. Whatever. The post-match beatdown is definitely dope, something I'll tell you to check out at that moment of time, that post-match beatdown was probably the best moment of the pay-per-view until, you know, we got some certain crazy shit happening. But at that moment of time, that post-match beatdown was like the best part of this fucking show. Not even kidding to you. Uh, let's see. What else did we got? Oh, yeah. The Bunny and Adam Rose faced off against Slady Gator. Yeah, I don't think any of you guys care. The Bunny got the win. Bunny and Adam Rose are still feuding. Why? Who knows? And who the fuck cares? <sighs> Diva title match. Brie and AJ kissed. <laughs> That's all I need to say about the Divas title match. Uh, Brie and AJ kissed. Nikki got the win. Show The Total Divas rule is over. I guess Total Divas can now win the belt. Thank fucking God. That means your Divas division is not depleted. And you show that the Divas division is all about the Divas championship and not being on Total Divas. So I'm happy that Nikki won the belt. I know a lot of you guys are upset. I know a lot of you guys are mad probably because that means AJ Lee's gone for the company. I don't think she's going to be gone for a long time. I think she's taking a break if anything. Alrighty then. Now it's time to talk about the main event, which is the most important part of this show. What I thought about the main event as a match as a whole was just sloppy garbage until the end. That's just that's just my opinion. I just thought this match was very sloppy. Bunch of stupid little run-ins, bunch of forced high spots, you know, dumb eliminations. Like, why is Ryback being eliminated first from Team Cena? Uh, hold on, let me take two steps back real quick. Why did Mark Henry get eliminated so quick? That's just dumb. And especially what was going to happen later in the night. And then, you have it where Ryback gets eliminated first from Team Cena. Why does Ryback get eliminated first? Like, the, the whole time, you build episodes of Raw and SmackDown around the big guy trying to join either team. And he gets eliminated first. That's just stupid. Why even build episodes around this guy if he's just going to get eliminated just like that? It's like... Back in 2005 when they had that Team SmackDown versus Team Raw match. Remember they were making Lashley seem like this big Ultra X Factor in that match. And he got eliminated like first for Team SmackDown. Why the fuck would you make Ryback this big X Factor if he's going to get eliminated first like that? That's just dumb. I knew Rusev was going to get eliminated in some dumb way like count out or DQ. So I was just fine with that. I don't know how Eric Rowan lasted long in this match. I, I don't. I don't get it. Why was Eric Rowan in this match for a long time? How come Eric Rowan outlasted Ryback? Still confused by that booking decision. <laughs> and then we get some funny booking decisions. Like, once again, the big show turning heel on John Cena. <laughs> Why? Who the fuck cares if Big Show and John Cena are feuding against? For real. Do any of you guys sit there and say, Oh, I'm so excited for this Big Show and Cena match at TLC. 
This is such filler garbage because Brock Lesnar, once again, is now confirmed for another pay-per-view. Like, he's not going to be at TLC, so they're pretty much like, Oh, we need John Cena to do something. I know. Let's send him the big show. It's not like you have Mark Henry sitting there or something to eliminate Cena. That would be more productive if you ask me. I was wondering, too, when John Cena got eliminated and Big Show did the shit that he did and Dolph Ziggler was a sole survivor, I was sitting there and saying to myself, yeah, I bet you Cena doesn't want to be the one to get saved by someone. That, that was pretty much what I was thinking to myself. Like, someone has to save this match and Cena does not want to look too vulnerable as a character saying that he needed help from someone else to win this match. So the only way John Cena can get eliminated from his own fucking team is to get screwed by his own team. That's what pretty much WWE was telling me with this John Cena elimination. It really pissed me off. Ziggler, though, I'm glad that he was the final guy for Team Cena. That's actually cool. You know, normally in the past, the WWE would be like, oh, yeah, fuck Dolph Ziggler, screw him. But they actually made him the final guy of Team Cena. But I knew that pretty much his win and him being the sole survivor would get overshadowed by something. I didn't know what that something was at the moment of time. I thought that something would be my boy, Randall Keith Orton, returning from his own home in his own hometown, St. Louis, Missouri, and saving Team Cena from the authority. I thought it would be Randall Keith Orton. But instead, we got something bigger and something better. Oh, this is the five minutes of awesome from this motherfucking pay-per-view. So pretty much, we got a bunch of crappy little rep bumps near the end of the match. Between, it was between Rollins and Ziggler. Those were the final two men standing for each team. We got a bunch of shitty ref bumps when the match should have been over a bunch of times. And then all of a sudden, you know, Triple H looks like he brought in his screwed referee into the ring. And he was like, count the pinball. And it looked like, you know, the authority was going to win. One, two, and then the lights go out. Weird noise effects. We are ka -ka, ka -ka. We're all like, oh my god, what the fuck is going on? And all of a fucking sudden, holy fucking shit. I marked the fuck out. Once I saw on the time tron, the person space, I was like, it stink! Oh, yes! It was awesome to see motherfucking Sting come out, dude. When I, I was thought, no, the WWE's trying us. This ain't real. This ain't real shit. Sting's not coming. And then I saw Sting come out wearing the long trench coat, the face paint, the slick back hair, the t-shirt. Yeah, he was wearing a t-shirt, just like his in his TNA days, brother. And he laid out Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury, and then the fucking awesome moment of him and Triple H staring down each other. Yes, fans, that is awesome. Seeing Sting in the middle of the WWE ring, staring down Triple H. The only thing that this told me was, though, oh, instead of getting Undertaker, we're going to get Sting versus Triple H, brother, at WrestleMania. Ooh. I don't mind. Because it was awesome to see Sting. Like, just keep in mind this. I hated how the match ended. Because this is something that TNA would do with their endings. But it was just awesome to see Sting finally in a WWE. It was awesome just to see him walk down the fucking aisle. And lay out some people. Hit the Scorpion Death Drop. And fucking look like a badass, man. It was just awesome to finally see Sting in the WWE, something that us as wrestling fans have been waiting for for a long-ass fucking time, we finally get it. And whether you're a Sting fan or not, dude, this is just an awesome moment for professional wrestling. This is something that we needed in 2014. Did Sting save this pay-per-view? No, he did not save this pay-per-view. This pay-per-view was still a bad pay-per-view to me. But is this one of those awesome moments that we will talk about from this pay-per-view and a memorable moment? No doubt about it. This was fucking awesome. I fucking loved it. The fans were so fucking hyped, so fucking loud for this fucking moment. Oh, it was just awesome to see motherfucking scene. This is like the one thing that is talked about from Survivor Series 2014. When you're like fucking older and shit like that, telling your kids something about Survivor Series 2014, you're going to tell them. That's the event Sting finally debuted in the WWE. But, you know, even though, yes, Ziggler was a sole survivor. It was like Sting had to be the one to save him. And I was thinking to myself, this is something TNA would do. This is like if, like, you know, fucking the main event mafia was facing the front line and, like, Sting came out at the end of the match and threw AJ Styles on top of Kurt Angle. I mean, this is something that, like, you know, fucking TNA would book as an ending to their pay-per-view. It, it totally overshadowed Dolph Ziggler as a sole survivor to me. I was just like, oh, come on, really? I mean, you get Dolph Ziggler, it's in a good prime position, you know, 
a lot of us internet smarts did not really see Dolph Ziggler becoming the sole survivor. He ends up in this fucking position, and he can't even get the win himself. He needs fucking the 50-some-odd old Sting to come out and save the day. <laughs> yeah, I can see why Cena got eliminated now. He was like, what are you talking about, brother? You're talking about Sting is going to be the hero that saves the WWE? I think not. I will not take that finish. We will give it to Dolph Ziggler. John Cena was like, nope, I ain't getting saved by Sting. Fuck that shit. <laughs> Oh, but, you know, it's still an awesome moment just for me as a reviewer and shit like that. I, I'm still going to call it how I see it. It's something how TNA would end their pay-per-view. I'm just saying, that's what TNA would do. Oh, my God, the icon staying. He's back in the impact zone, brother. Oh, he helped the front line win. whoop de doo <laughs> uh, But, nonetheless, it was awesome to see the icon staying. It's sad that his debut... Is on such a bad show. Because, like, normally when it was something awesome and epic as this, you would be like, man, I'm going to go watch that show again. But how many of you guys are literally going to sit through this whole pay-per-view again just to watch Sting make his WWE debut? How how many of you guys are willing to do that again? Because I know I ain't. I ain't going to be one of those guys that sit through this pay-per-view again. If anything, I'll just go on YouTube to watch his debut in the WWE. But nonetheless, Sting debuting was awesome. It gave us an awesome moment. But overall, Survivor Series 2014, to me, was just a bad show. And I'm just saying. It was just a bad show overall. The only redeeming factor is Sting debuting, and he couldn't even save this show. It was just awesome to see him in the WWE ring. I, I know I'm excited about Sting, but I like Sting, so that's why. Um, but maybe Sting will become general manager of this. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, but Survivor Series 2014... Was an overall a bad show. It's not really a show I recommend for you guys to go watch, except for probably Sting's debut. But I don't know. What did you guys think about Survivor Series 2014? I, I want to know. Maybe Sting's debut changed people's opinions on the show. Maybe people like the show now because Sting debuted here. I don't know. Um, but I still think this is a bad show overall when you look at the whole spectrum of things. A lot of stuff just felt like filler. And like I said, the ending reminded me of something that TNA would do with their main event. So... Comment down below your thoughts on Survivor Series 2014. If you guys like me, give this video a big old thumbs up. Follow me on Twitter at ChaseOver68. I'll see you all next time. Peace.